It's our, our, you know, right after the Super Bowl. No scores to cover except the the big game. This one, uh, Vince. What was the final score? Then uh, just jumping into after that score. The final score was Usher performed twelve songs. It was great. <laughs> What a mean question, oh. man. What that's so mean. Hey Vince, how did you get What's your heart score? ripped out? <laughs> All right, so uh the 49ers losing overtime 25 to 22 to the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes is your MVP to the surprise of absolutely no one. And I believe I said it last week that the one thing I didn't want was Patrick Mahomes with the ball like with the last shot. That's the yeah. that, that's what I said. I did say that. I was very concerned about that. And wouldn't you fucking know it? Your boy is still the oracle, even in bad things too. It's not all wins, you know. So, so that's fun for me. Uh, uh, somebody you... cue up my chemical romance because I'm not okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's crazy is that they won the game on the same stupid play that they beat the Eagles with last year. The corn dog play, as uh, Andy Reid has now coined it. Ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. Did you hear uh, Andy Reid was texting Antonio Pierce, thanking him for uh, beating the uh, the Kansas City Chiefs earlier in the season? Oh, uh, on Christmas? Yeah, just saying, you know, hey, like a veteran team needs to, you know, needs to be reminded that they're mortal, you know, kind of that sentiment. It was the wake-up call, yeah. Yeah. So he was like, thanks, you know, beautiful facilities in Vegas. Thanks for, for beating us. Uh, it reminded us that, you know, we got work to do. Um, so you're welcome chiefs. You're welcome. Uh, man, uh, what do you, you know, in summary, Vince, what do you think it, it came down to? I got, I got a couple of ideas. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's, to, but... there's honestly probably like a dozen different things, like any one of them breaks a different way the Niners are the champions like it right. there was so many opportunities we can start right at the beginning the first drive uh the Niners are driving down the field no problems whatsoever right up until Christian McCaffrey of all people fumbles the ball, you know uh Patrick Starr roasted him alive for that on the Nickelodeon broadcast yeah uh, so so we can start there we can start with Trent Williams uh a false start and a holding penalty on the same drive to end the next drive. Like, I mean, these are guys that you don't get to the Super Bowl without them, you know? And so, so they make those mistakes. It's like, well, what are you going to do? You, you just kind of suck it up and move on. And the Niners still ended up with a lead. Uh, and, and they even, when they, they even briefly got down at the end of the game there and, came, and was able to come back and score and uh, take the lead. Then they, you know, there was just enough time, like what, just under two minutes and Patrick Mahomes marched him down the field and got that tying field goal. And then the overtime, it's coming out now, like after post game that uh, the Niners weren't aware of the overtime rules in the playoffs. And that's because the they've made the rules more and more unnecessarily convoluted uh, in the last few years because uh, because of the, the, the fucking bills, you know? <laughs> Uh, they 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 were bitching about how they didn't get a shot or whatever, and then the Niners get the ball first. They go down. They end up getting that field goal, and uh, Kyle's ex explanation was that he wanted to be able to, the, to be the team that gets the ball third. Um, but of course, the problem is being the team that gets the ball second. If you if you can hold them to a field goal like the Chiefs held the Niners to the field goal, you go down, score a touchdown, and you win or you have the field goal in your back pocket to survive another round. But yep. I mean, there was like, we can talk about the, um, uh, when the Niners forced a punt and then it hits off of, I don't even know who it was, some special teamer. And then Ray Ray McLeod like has to try to make a play on it because it's, you know, it's a live ball at that point. I mean, I, I appreciate him trying to make a play on the ball. I wish he would have dove on it instead of trying to field it cleanly because nobody ever feels those cleanly. Come on. I mean, that, that's the one mistake and, and in the heat of the moment you just you know you're trying to act reactively and i i wish he would have dove on it instead of trying to like pick it up and scoop it up there's just so many opportunities that were left on the table when you go down and you kick field goals instead of getting a touchdown at any one of those field goals 
if you, if you get a touchdown instead. I loved going for it on fourth down with Kittle, and he gets it, and like you can see the 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 the, the first down cam, and he's basically his shin takes it out, so you know he got it on that fourth down. That was a that was a gutsy call. I wish I kind of saw a few more of those gutsy type calls earlier in the game. That third quarter, they they basically went away from the run entirely. It was three three and outs in a row. CMC had a seven yard run, but you overall you netted negative. I think maybe two yards total in three drives in the third quarter. Like that's that is unacceptable. Um, it just it, it it allowed the Chiefs to hang around, and I think for most of the game the Niners were the better team, but just something happened again, and here we here I am. Uh, as an adult, I've seen three Super Bowl losses in the last dozen years or so and it's rough this one this one might be the worst it's the toughest uh because you have a lead in overtime which of course was something a decade ago doesn't matter you can't have a lead in overtime you just win in overtime right i mean so between all kinds of stuff like that as far as the officiating goes yeah there's a couple of calls here and there that were a little bit charmin i called them like when we were watching but there's nothing you can really complain about. Nothing egregious that you can point and say, that's the reason that bad call, whatever. I mean, I wish there would have been a couple more of those holding calls uh, against the chiefs, you know, but, but the Niners still, even with those, they, they did a great job. Most of the night kind of keeping Patrick Mahomes, like, like from escaping and creating a lot of plays. There was the chiefs had a bunch of three and outs too. I mean, the, the defense overall played great until the end. Uh, when yeah. they, I think they were just gassed, like uh, the offense couldn't bail them out with, um, you know, those three straight three and outs just um, between that. And then you also lose Dre Greenlaw early in the game, too. Yeah, uh, I was going to bring that it's up. It's an Achilles. Yeah. Uh, it's just there's so many things. If, if if Dre Greenlaw is playing in that second half, I don't even think it goes to overtime. I think the Niners win it straight up. Like, it's just it's just unlucky things happening on top of. Um, poor execution in certain instances. And there's just, there's a dozen little things like, and like I said, if any one of them breaks the other way, we're talking about a completely different story. Like if everything else happened that happened, but Dre Greenlaw is able to play the, the entire game. I think the Niners win. Like there's, there's any one of them, man. If, if the Niners score that touchdown on the first opening drive, I think the Niners are probably winning, like, like holding the trophy. Even if they have to I'm settle for a field goal. You know, yeah, even, even if, if they, they settle, settle for a field goal, even if they settle for we can talk goal. about Moody missing the point after, which kind of yep. changes the complexion yep. of the game as well. And the the Chiefs needing to score a touchdown instead of just settling for a field goal at the end there, that would have changed the game a little bit, changed the optics, changed the way you call game the game, the plays you're t- calling uh, on defense and offense too. Just, I mean, it's rough. It's brutal. This was the one. The Chiefs were the most beatable they've ever been, and Patrick Mahomes still did um, generationally talented things to to will the Chiefs to win. And I'm sorry, I'm so sorry to those of you Chief haters out there. We tried, <laughs> it didn't work out. I'm just, I'm more devastated that, devastated than you are. Um, I'm real glad I'm a Warriors fan too, because if it wasn't for the Warriors. I don't have a single championship since I was eight years old with the uh, with the Niners winning the last Super Bowl 29 years ago. That's another thing that like I was doing the math on my way over to uh, to your place to watch it, Sam. The Niners won five of the first 29 Super Bowls. They there's been 29 Super Bowls since then, and the Niners don't have a single win there. So yeah. like a little a uh, little top heavy in the first half of career Super Bowls there. Yeah. Um, no, for sure. Tyler, All you right. want to, you want to add yeah, anything? So I'm going to drink some water. Somebody else start speaking. Um, yeah, I think it's just pretty much the same thing that I had emotions and feelings last year, you know, uh, against the same stupid team. Um, and I just want to say it was the same feelings I had back in uh, 2003. So yeah. Yeah. Right. You <laughs> were a fresh the same face, team, though. you know, um, late team, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that Moody, the Moody miss miss. I mean, I've I I'm not gonna say I'm a a fan or I'll I'll stand up for Moody. Not that I would anyways, but I just I felt that all season long 
he's kind of come yeah, up short been, when you needed you him the been, most. There's, there's been yeah. a yeah, just yeah. every now and then he'll miss one and remind you something happens where it's like, oh yeah, he's a rookie. Like yeah. he, that yeah. that extra point, he kicked it off of his ankle. He got none of his foot, yeah. man. Like that was just it was poor execution. Yeah. So that that booty changes a big part of it. Um do I, I I don't really care about the Christian McCaffrey fumble because then Pacheco fumbled it on the two yard line. So, you know, I feel like we're going to call that a wash at that point. Right. Yeah. So um, I think the Moody thing is a big deal. I, I think Shanahan saying what he did about overtime was probably just to cover his own ass. I think he legit forgot about the overtime rules, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's only been in a rule for two years. Right. So. Yeah, you should know, but if you didn't know, you know, that shame on you. But at the same time, to Vince's point, rules change all the time. But if it were me and that was the rule in place, you're kicking the ball, you knew Andy Reid was licking his chops, like, oh, this guy is really gonna go for the receiving. Like I get to the chessboard is set up for me now to figure out if I want to tie this game or win this game. So um that's probably the two biggest mistakes I would I would probably say is that kick and then the overtime. Um, other than that, I mean, it was a, I think it was a great officiated game. I mean, both sides had penalties called against them. Nothing was super egregious. So you're like, wow, that shouldn't be a. Pe-. I mean, some of them were like, wow, that's not a penalty, but it was for both sides too. You know, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, it was a fair. It, it, it was called equally fair. Yes, that, that, I, mean, I agree. And they they were letting them play a little bit too. Yeah, like um, yep. at, at least on the uh, as far as pass interference goes, like. Yeah, uh, both sides were getting away with a little bit more than uh, than I would have liked. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I think gr- losing Greenlaw that's a big blow, and on a freak accident. I mean, he was excited for his guys to 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 get a stop, and he got to go out there and and you know lo- popped his Achilles. So maybe that's a factor because you lose this morale support of like, oh man, one of our best players is on defense has gone down, right? So maybe that is a, a factor in their head. Um, if you're going to point to three key things, that'd probably be my third key factor, but biggest being that kick and then the overtime decision to to receive the ball instead of kicking it. Yeah, you're you're talking about two thirds of the game without um without Dre Greenlaw, and that's that's rough. So yeah, it's yeah. it is what it is. And... Yeah, you you got to think Dre Greenlaw is going to make a play or here or there, stop a you know uh, mm-hmm. stop a first down, being able to like um play yeah, you know like just... like uh, shadow. Patrick Mahomes, if he like escapes, like that that twenty yard run that he had, um, a Dre Greenlaw stops that for like four yards or something like that. You know, exactly. exactly. Yeah, I mean, little you know, things we, like that. We were watching a little bit of the post game on uh, the Forty Nine ers station, and Whitner was kind of talking about how how it changed, you know, the um, the the linebacker schemes, you know, and who's covering who, and what Dre Greenlaw does. So it definitely disrupted what the 49ers wanted to do on defense for the most part, they, they recovered and played pretty well. Uh, but Greenlaw definitely would have, you know, made it a little bit tougher. I think it does, uh, you know, the, the extra point kick in a regular season game, you're probably not really worried about it. Right. Um, but it seems like when you miss a, a easy kick, I'll say, uh, uh, extra point, it's always going to bite you in the ass in the playoffs or my or rule Bowl. is anything, any kick under 40 yards, uh, should be makeable by anybody at the NFL level. And those right. extra points they're, they're you take them at 33 yards basically right. every time. So, so every extra point is makeable as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, that's, that's, that's an emotional dagger at least. Yeah. Uh, if and it's the, not a real uh, dagger, I'll say the, the overtime rules, the misunderstanding of the overtime rules were after the fact uh, you hear that the 49ers players weren't really prepared for that scenario. And then you hear Kansas city that pretty much all year they've been dedicating time talking about playoff rules and the differences in playoff rules. And Andy Reid, since the playoff started, they've been running drills for playoffs and developing plans, what they were going to do. And every scenario was covered. And they said that if the 49ers scored a touchdown, they knew they had the rebuttal and they were going to, their goal was to march back down the field, get a touchdown and go for two. And so so they they weren't going to even, they weren't going to even attempt the 49, allow the 49ers to attempt a third uh, possession, you know, um, of the game. Um, And that just kind of feeds into, you know, what we hear about Andy Reid. I know there was some some drama about the the practice facilities that the 49ers had. 
Um, and there was some scrutiny getting thrown towards the Chiefs because Andy Reid didn't want to alter his his schedule. And his history is he doesn't want to alter his schedule. He's very schedule calendar oriented. And I, I think some of those details kind of showed up. And it showed up definitely in overtime, understanding the rules, understanding what everybody needs to do. Um, I think teams take on the identities of their head coaches. And you see that the the Kansas City Chiefs, when it when it comes to crunch time, uh Patrick Mahomes, uh Travis Kelsey, those guys rep they represent their coach. They know the details, they know what they need to do to make big plays. And uh as one uh, some I heard it on the radio somewhere today that you know uh, the Kansas City Chiefs put on their gold jackets and went to work. <laughs> like, you know they made gold jacket plays. Yeah, and um, unfortunately for the 49ers, that was the big difference maker. Is uh, Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey, these guys made made Hall of Fame legendary plays. Um, I think I've said this before. I picked. I was hoping the 49ers would win. I ended up picking the Chiefs because of our. Uh, show bet uh, yeah, exactly. competition that we got. Yeah. Um, part of me did feel the Chiefs money was coming in on the Chiefs because of uh, that crunch time, because of the Hall of Fame, that championship DNA um, was gonna was gonna shine through. Um, so it was unfortunate, but uh, man, the Chiefs, the, you know, that it, it all starts at the quarterback for yeah. every team. It all starts at the quarterback, and there's like what three quarterbacks in the league. That you could say like, oh, this is a for sure guy you want to build around. Everybody else, you can it's make like, the argument. Like levels. Yeah, yeah. You can make the argument, but until it's done, until they do something and get there, and I think the 49ers got a quarterback. I'm not I'm not knocking Purdy. I'm not knocking the 49ers. Mm. I, I think they'll be right back next year. You yeah, know, I, I really is, do. Yeah. I mean, on uh, like it, for context. At this time last year, Brock Purdy was having his elbow getting Tommy John surgery to it at this time last year. And for baseball, it takes a full year to come back. And this man was starting on opening day in September. So it was already a pretty miraculous comeback just to be on the field. I knew I had questions whether he would be able to start at the beginning of the year. And I, I, I voiced them on this channel several times. Until they said they confirmed, yeah, he's going to be ready. He's good to go. At that point, it's like fine, but you just never know. And I will say, Brock was art was already setting records, like single season records for quarterbacking for the 49ers this year. Uh, imagine having a full year where he's not doing rehab on his elbow just to come back, where he can yeah. just train like normal and and get better in that way. You know, not trying to come back from a major injury. He's able to just do the normal program. And I think I think next year we can't we might see something um Drew Brees esque out of right. Brock Purdy next year. That's and, my know, early hot take. It was unfortunate that uh you, you know, Brock Purdy had an opportunity to win the game, but that blown offensive coverage, uh was it what's the right guard? Brunskill? Uh 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 yeah, yeah. Brunskill missed that coverage. Mm-hmm. Which allowed the the Chiefs yeah, to Chris run Jones right up blew it up, blew blew right past him, and yeah. Purdy Brock had, to had two it, guys open, but two guys had, open on that play. But he had Ayuk dead, yeah, dead center, Ayuk dead center in the back, and then he that ended was, up going with Jawan. He just he couldn't plant and deliver to right. Jawan. He couldn't he step chose, into the throw. He couldn't yeah. step up and, and deliver the ball um, accurately like we've come to to expect from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the game was there. You know there was opportunities there. Um, it's sad for the 49ers, but, but I, I think the, you know, the Purdy is on his rookie deal. He's not making a whole lot of money. So you're going to, you're going to be able to retain some of your talent and probably add some talent. And it seems like the 49ers are doing pretty good in their draft. So hopefully that continues. I think they're right back there. Um, we talked about the Eagles are probably going to be right back there. I think they hired the Eagles hired uh, really good coordinators. So I think they're going to be right back in it. Uh, as long as the Chiefs have Mahomes and Andy Reid and Kelsey, um, you know, they're going to be in it. Um, and all and of them are coming back, too. Nobody's retiring. Yeah. So, yeah, that, so that's a good point, Sam, is that Purdy was drafted where he was. That this is essentially, for a comparison, this is your Steph Curry moment. That you've got a guy who's not going to be 
requiring a lot of money because of where he was drafted. Exactly. You definitely have a lot of more money to be able to expend on ways to build your team and talent wise. So I think I do expect him offensively to be back as well. the number one to me the number one thing that the 49ers need they need a wide receiver that bl- can blow the top off. You yeah, know they yeah. got they got really good wide receivers that can catch the ball and get physical. You know uh, the Yak brothers and all of that stuff. They need a guy that can go deep, that can that can get that can just blow past everybody yeah. when when that time comes that you need it. You know. Yeah, so. uh, my dad in the chat saying he would like to see the Niners spend. Uh, some money on uh, offensive line besides Trent Williams. 100% agree. Um, uh, really improving that, having somebody who's a dog besides Trent, uh, that would be that that would be nice. You know, uh, yeah. that that would help a lot. And maybe that play doesn't get blown up. You know, maybe th- then maybe Brock is able to see. Oh, Brandon Ayuk is wide fucking open. He got schemed open real well. He made a nice move. And uh, there's th- there's the game right there. You know, that's a touchdown. And then the Chiefs have to play that entire their their side of it completely differently. Absolutely. So we'll all see. right. Any uh you guys got anything else for the 49ers Super Bowl? I'm good. I'm I'm good for now. If there's anything else, I'm sure I'll shout out about it. Um and another thing or whatever. 